Okay, in the last video, I introduced the idea of chirality and that if a molecule had a carbon that had four different groups attached to it, like in this one chloroethanol, right, this carbon here, the first number one carbon, has an OH group, a chlorine, a hydrogen, and a methyl group, this molecule has two different isomers that are not identical, even though all the atom connections are the same by virtue of sort of the directions that things are aimed. And so this is a very important concept that things can be optically active, can be chiral, and if two things with chiral carbons are mirror images, like these two, they're different and they cannot be superimposed to show that they're identical because they're not identical, they're different. So if you have the 3D molecules, it's really easy to see them in 3D because they are in 3D, but we have a couple of challenges now. They need to name these two different isomers because they are different, behave differently. They need to have different names or different designations of the optical activity. Plus, we need to have a way to draw them quickly and easily on a two-dimensional canvas so that the three-dimensionality was there or implied. So one of the first things is the naming part is R versus S for the 1-chloro-1 ethanol. And the way they decided to do this was they put the lowest priority group by atomic number in back. So if you have a molecule like this guy here and there's a chiral carbon, you identify the priorities of the groups. So we have the carbon has an OH on it, it has a hydrogen on it, it has a chlorine on it, and it's got a methyl group on it. Right, so four different groups and we would say that this hydrogen is in the back. So I'm going to hold this molecule so the hydrogen is in the back. Right? So I'm holding it by the lowest priority group. And much like we saw with the Newman projections, if you have a tetrahedral thing and you put something directly in the back, then the other three things are aimed towards you in a triangle. So if I take this molecule and... I should see if this is this molecule. Um, again, this is a two-dimensional picture, so the three-dimensionality is not there. Um, but if I go ahead and hold this in back, and carbon, hydrogen in back, now I can see the chlorine is up and to the left. The OH group It's up and to the right, and these are coming towards us, so I should use these wedges to show that those are coming towards us, and the methyl group is coming towards us as well. So if I hold the hydrogen in the back for this molecule, I see chlorine, OH, and CH3. Now I said the priority group is by atomic number, so the priority is chlorine is atomic number 17. The oxygen is atomic number 8, right? The carbon is atomic number 6, and the hydrogen is atomic number 1. That's why I put the lowest priority group in back. The hydrogen is always the lowest atomic number. And so if there is a hydrogen in your molecule, you put that in back. And now you look at the relative orientation of chlorine, which is number one, the oxygen, which is number two, and the carbon, which is number three, and relative to the center, you can see that we're moving clockwise. So clockwise, chlorine to OH to methyl like this, priority group one, two, and three, clockwise, that means it's the R isomer, the R isomer. So this molecule is the R isomer, my left-handed doggy, as I would call him. And if I were to pull the other guy out, 
he's different, right? And if I put the hydrogen in back for this one, you can see that you have the reverse orientation with respect to priority groups. So chlorine, oxygen, methyl goes counterclockwise. And that's what you would see for the mirror image of this guy. So if you took the mirror image, put the OH close to the mirror, the chlorine far from the mirror, and the methyl in between. Again, the hydrogen is in back. Now we're going the opposite direction, and this one is S. So two different optical isomers, iso optical isomers R and S. R is clockwise with respect to the priority of rotation when the lowest priority group is in back and S is counterclockwise. And with this picture, I really can't tell which one it is because there's no chirality imposed here or implied. If I wanted to try to get the, the same as this, I'd have to use some wedges and dashes to show what's in back and what's not. So let me go ahead and grab this R molecule and this is where it'd really be great if you, everybody had molecular model sets and could play along. Pause it here and say, okay, I'm going to take the R isomer with the hydrogen in back. We're going clockwise. And now I'm going to look at how it looks on the page here. So if I have the chiral carbon in the center and I put the chlorine on the left and the hydrogen on the right, like it shows there, Right, the chlorine on the left and the hydrogen on the right, then I've got the OH down here, or sorry, the, yeah, then my molecule, the OH is down here, but in the drawing, the CH3 is down there. So this is, um, if I want to get this right, I'm going to flip this over, and now I've got the chlorine on the left, the hydrogen on the right, the methyl on the bottom, and the OH on the top, just like it is. So in order to get the perspective right on this one, I have to put wedges to saying that the chlorine and the hydrogen are pointing away from me, right? And the OH and the methyl are pointing towards me. So this is a perspective drawing of the R isomer where I used wedges and dashes to show what's towards me, what's away from me, and I used the one we confirmed as the R isomer because of the clockwise rotation to help me to visualize which way the groups would point towards me or away from me so I could see how to draw the wedges and dashes. So this business of R versus S is a little difficult to handle unless you have some convention. Me working with the model set makes it easy for me. So hopefully you get a chance to play with models and to learn how to visualize the molecule for R versus S designation, if you have the model in hand, it should be easy.